What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the all new Toyota Grand Highlander. This one is a platinum 4x4 finished off in midnight black with an MSRP just under $60,000. Big shout out and thank you to Classic Toyota of Wilkesboro for providing this new Grand Highlander for today's video. Take a look at their website, links down below. Underneath the hood of the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Platinum, you're gonna find the 2.4 liter inline four cylinder turbocharged engine. It's putting out 265 horsepower with 310 pound-feet of torque. The engine is paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission and sends the power to all four wheels. Curb weight is around 4,750 pounds. It can even tow about 5,000 pounds. And running on a 17.8 gallon fuel tank, you can expect 20 miles per gallon in the city with 26 out on the highway. Overall length is 201.4 inches with a wheelbase at 116.1. Width is 78.3 and height is 70.1 inches. And then now moving on to the exterior styling with the all new 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander. This is basically a larger version of the iconic Highlander. However, this honestly is a brand new vehicle. It's not just an extended Highlander. You're gonna notice the extremely bold design for the exterior look. We get a really nice set of LED headlights with a blacked out housing. You can see the daytime running light up above that and then a really cool chrome trim piece underneath the headlights and above the grille. We have the Toyota badge right in the center with some trim on the sides of it, and then a massive grille down below to provide maximum cooling to the radiators. You can see all the gloss black mesh, a forward facing camera, and then I like how you're gonna see the LED fog lights and some more trim. We have parking sensors down below, some nice gray trim on the lower portion of the front bumper, and I just love how aggressive the front end of the Grand Highlander looks. Really does come together very well. You can see how the hood flows its way into that front bumper, has more sharp lines fading towards the windshield. Really can't complain with the new exterior design. On the side, you're gonna see a set of 20 inch wheels finished off in chrome with a multi-spoke design. You're gonna get just a little bit of plastic black surrounding that wheel. We have a nice sharp body line throughout the lower portion of the door and more of that plastic black in the side skirt body colored on the door handles along with the mirror caps. Then you can see an LED turn signal along with a side view camera. You can see some chrome trim in the lower portion of these windows with gloss black trim surrounding it. We have silver for the roof rails, panoramic roof, along with your roof racks up above that. And as you make our way to the full side profile, you can definitely see how much larger this is than the typical Highlander. However, it's not as large as a Sequoia. So really good proportions. I like how everything really does look perfect on this car. You can see a nice smooth body work to the rear fender and it kind of cuts into that rear spoiler with kind of an S design. You can see the massive third brake light integrated into that spoiler along with your rear wiper and then a nice set of LED taillights. Integrated very well to the body work with a nice red design and then Grand Highlander is written out throughout the entire back all in black. We get your Toyota badge, all wheel drive badge and of course platinum on the right. In the back end you can definitely see Highlander in it. However, it's just a little bit larger. We get one sharp body line throughout the lift gate and then more of this plastic black for the rear diffuser with all of your parking sensors and then silver trim. And then moving on to the key file, we have lock, unlock, their tailgate release, and it says Grand Highlander on the back. If I go ahead and lock this SUV, all you have to do is grab the door handle. Of course, it's gonna automatically unlock and we can take a look at this interior. This one's gonna get the black leather interior with some silver trim throughout it and light gray wood trim. You're gonna see all black surrounding this door panel. We get a little bit of padding for your armrest, nice size grab handle, window and mirror controls with your release handle. You also get memory seating and then that light gray color. Get storage down below, Grand Highlander is along the door sill, and then all of your power controls on the left side of the seat. You can see the smooth leather material along with all the perforation throughout the center. Has a nice comfortable appearance, definitely fits the style of the car. Nice stripe up on top, and a little bit of stitching throughout the headrest. And then spinning around, we get a black leather steering wheel with black trim and silver accents. And then now inside the Grand Highlander, keeping my foot on the brake, we can go ahead and fire it up. You're gonna get both of your screens turning on. Then you get a nice digital gauge cluster. You can see the tack over on the left side along with your speedometer on the right. Get a few more bits of information all throughout it. And we can configure it slightly using the controls on this left side. So if I go ahead and hold down OK, you're able to adjust what you want to see in the center screen. You have driver support that will pop up. You can even get the navigation screen, a few settings within the car, and then any messages. 
If we hit OK on one of them, you can see everything that's going to pop up on the vehicle. And then hitting the back button, it'll exit out of there. Now, if we go ahead and adjust all your drive modes, which is the selector right in the center, we have your normal, you have off-road, as well as different street modes. If I go ahead and toggle it to the left, you're going to see the mud and sand with a really cool depiction. Toggling to the right, we have rock and dirt. And then into eco, along with sport, and then normals back in the center. So really cool depictions and animations you're going to see on that screen. You can also see on the right side, we have all of our cruise control settings. Toyota badge right in the center, and then a little bit of Bluetooth and audio. We do have steering wheel mounted paddle shifters, front and rear wiper, a sensor in the center, and then all your headlights and turn signals on the left stock. Over on this far left side, we have a heated steering wheel, automatic high beams, along with that power lift gate button. We have more of this gray color, this synthetic leather material, and then a heads up display. You can see some black running across the dashboard, more of this material. There's even a USB-C on the far side with storage under here and more of that wood trim. And then moving to the center, this is the typical new Toyota infotainment. You got a massive screen on it. Of course, once it's set up, you're going to have your navigation. All your audio will come up along with phone integration. Under vehicle, you can adjust a few climate control settings for front and rear. We also have trip information that will pop up along with your different history. And then vehicle alert with any more messages. Going under settings, of course, you have a few more things that are going to pop up. Now, if I go ahead and put us into reverse, you're going to see that backup camera on the far right side. We also have a top-down view. And what's very cool is once you start moving, your car is going to black out and then gray out. As you can see, it follows what is on the road in front of you and behind you. So really nice to see that when you do use that backup camera. And then underneath the screen, we have all of our physical climate controls. We get dual zone temperature, heated and ventilated seating. I like the toggles to adjust everything along with your fan speed. You can sync everything. You have your rear climate control as well. More of these controls. And these are nice solid dials with a cool screen. We have more vents down below that. More plugs along with this view icon just to give you a shortcut into that camera. So we get a really nice 360 camera view as well, which is great to see on a vehicle like this. We can toggle that icon for more of a fisheye view. So definitely pretty sweet to see the cameras you're going to see in this. Underneath all that, we do get your wireless phone charging. There's storage down below, along with your two cup holders. And then underneath the shifter, we have the park and brake, along with the brake hold. Nice leather around the boot itself. We have the automatic start. We also have traction control, downhill assist, and then a snow mode as well. Snow mode just gives you a small icon. And then behind that, we have more of this leather material throughout the armrest. And then in the center, we can pull this back and it reveals a ton of hidden storage space all underneath. It actually goes down pretty deep, which is a really cool touch. And then the glove box on the passenger side is what you would expect. One last look at the Grand Highlander. Definitely a lot different than the typical Highlander. Has a lot of the new Toyota in it. Definitely a good place to be. We have that massive sunroof up on top with a sunshade, all of your dome lights, and then the rear view mirror also features a camera with different adjustments. And of course you can toggle that for a standard mirror. And then now moving on to the rear seat space for the second row on the Grand Highlander. Door panels finished off just like we saw up front. We do get a massive manual sunshade. And then on these seats, you're gonna see the same smooth leather material with all the perforations in the center. These are captain's chairs with your armrest, a little bit of storage in the center console, and then all of your climate controls. These are heated and ventilated. You can see all of your controls with temperature, different plugs, along with a plug down below, and then even storage on these back sides. These seats have a lot of different functions. You can pull this one to slide the seat forwards and back. That'll fold it down. We have recline, and then even pulling this one up here, it will get the seat out of the way so you can enter into that third row. We get somewhat of a nice step as we get into that third row seat, and then this is where it really differs from the Highlander. This is much larger looking. You can see armrests and cup holders, and it can even seat three people. All right, so sitting now in the third row with the Grand Highlander, with the second row at my height, five foot 11, and this all the way reclined, this is where it's at. The normal Highlander to me, a little cramped for an adult in the third row. It's more of in a pinch, you got it. This is actually a really nice third row, pretty much on par with the Sequoia. My knees are fitting perfectly. Of course, even with this, I could always extend my leg, but this is genuinely very nice. The recline, I have so much space back here. There's even air vents up above. We have USB-Cs, we have more of those cup holders, and just a lot of space. And these recline so much. If you take a look at this seat, by pulling it all the way up, you can get a good understanding. That is like almost a one foot recline. So that is really impressive to see. Good job, Toyota. This back seat is really, really nice. And from back here, I can easily pull that lever and get the seat out of the way to climb out. 
And then now into the second row seat. As you'd expect, this is a good place to be. Full size seating. Of course, you can recline these quite a lot as well. With the driver's seat at my height, plenty of knee room and foot room. So really, this is a great family SUV. I like all the storage solutions you're gonna see. The windows are big. I mean, this is a really, really roomy interior. They definitely nail it. You got all the amenities you're gonna want, and it's nice that a throw even gets the air. So this is definitely where it's at. Moving on to the cargo area, I can hold down the button on the key fob, the one on the interior, or of course there is one underneath the Grand Highlander badge. Now back here, you can get a better idea of how much the seat is gonna recline for the third row. Really nice angle. We have a lot of space back here, as you can tell, really similar to a Sequoia, quite honestly, with the third row up as well. So that is a really good touch. From here, I can grab these levers and get these seats all the way down. Headrests are gonna fold down too, once you pull that lever. And then now you can see how much cargo space you get with the seats folded down. This is a full-size SUV sizing. So really nice to see just how much space. And then with the second row folded down, you can see just how much more interior space the Grand Highlander is gonna offer. You do have to manually fold down the second row, so you have to go back in here, pull it down a little bit, and then pull the second lever. But with them down, it's nice and flat. Same with the load floor back there. You have so much space. So this is definitely great for people, as well as great for cargo. All right, so setting off now in the Grand Highlander, let's test out this four cylinder. If I go into sport mode, put into manual. Not bad, I mean, obviously it's not a performance car or anything fast. However, it seems like it can get out of its own way. It's not bad, I wouldn't say it's anything too out of the ordinary or peppy, but it's basically a decent power plant. Uh, no more V6, it seems like, so this is the engine, or I believe a hybrid's available, I'm not 100% sure on that. But normal driving, it is really comfortable. There is actually a dash cam up here, which is really cool to see. Some normal things, you know, visibility is really good out the front. You feel nice and high up, you feel like you're in something super roomy. Over your right shoulder, the pillar in the way back is a little bulky. However, honestly, it's pretty easy to get used to. The headrest in the second row is just a little bit in the way. Of course, that sensor's telling me to look straight. But as far as normal driving, it's definitely pretty comfortable. The seats are really padded too. You feel kind of like you're in a luxury car. It's just really comfortable to sit in here. I like the overall driver position. I mean, the steering wheel feels nice. Armrests are in a great place to just sit back and kind of relax in this vehicle. It's pretty smooth and quiet too. You don't really hear any wind noise or road noise or anything like that. Let's do a small turning circle. For being obviously a little bit bigger, it actually has a really tight turning circle. So I like how it seems decently maneuverable in the slow speed stuff. Let's go back to sport mode. I mean, it's not too bad. It does get up to the hill pretty good. Yeah, so not bad. Not a bad power plant for sure. The eight speed, super smooth. You don't really feel the shifts all too much. And just normal driving, it feels like kind of what you would expect. I like all the tech in it. Of course, the ventilated seats and everything. Seems like a car you can honestly just drive and drive with the whole family. And now that you know you can confidently fit people in that third row, I mean, this is just a solid family car. And I like how it's not as big as a Sequoia. Not everyone wants that big, but if you need the third row, this is a great option. I think the normal Highlander is for the person who might use a third row every now and then. So this is spot on for that in the middle type of vehicle. And when you are driving in it, this is a pleasant place to be. When you're in eco mode, it tones down the throttle for sure. Car feels a little bit more conservative now. And I mean, just like relaxing. The tech works good too. The cruise control, I had that on. And uh, using like the steering intervention stuff, it follows the lanes and everything. So really nice to see it have a good cruise control system. So Grand Highlander just kind of getting my bearings with driving it. It seems like a nice SUV to pilot. It doesn't feel too big when I'm sitting in here. I feel like it's very manageable for people who aren't too interested in the biggest vehicles. And just kind of seems like a nice vehicle to be in. So turning around to my honest thoughts with the Grand Highlander. I don't mind the engine. You know, just getting up to speed right there, that was up to 50. I didn't feel like I was stressing it or anything. Barely got to 4,000 RPM. So it's not that, I wouldn't mind more power. Again, I think a hybrid's available. I haven't looked that up just yet. If the hybrid's available, I would personally buy a hybrid just to get basically this engine with the electronics. But this is pretty good for the typical person buying this. Obviously the person buying a Grand Highlander, they're just cruising around with the family. So they're just cruising. 
and uh, it's an adequate power plant to at least get up to speed and get pretty good efficiency. You know, this still is a pretty big size SUV, kind of like a Chevy Tahoe or something. However, you're going to get nearly twice the MPG. So it's a much more economical choice than a lot of the big SUVs out there. So I really like the platform. You know, like I said, when I was in the normal Highlander, you compare the third row to that in a Jeep Grand Cherokee L or the Nissan Pathfinder. The Toyota is kind of the small one in the third row where it's cramped. The others are actually doable. This is that sweet spot to where now you're in a real full-size three-row SUV, but you don't feel like it. I had a Sequoia for a week to test that out, and it is so much bigger than this. This does not feel like the Sequoia. This feels very similar to a Highlander. So I like how you can get that normal size SUV without going crazy, and yet you get real third row. So they did a good job on the sizing. The way it drives feels exactly what I would expect. Pricing, I'd say it's not too bad. This one's fully loaded at $60,000. Honestly, I mean, today's market, obviously cars are getting more pricey, but that doesn't seem too out of fetch for a car like this. And it feels nice in here. I think Toyota's done a great job in the last couple of years, giving their interiors less of a plasticky feel Obviously, Toyotas are bulletproof reliable. They are top right now in reliability, and they pretty much have always been at least near the top. But right now, they are the top in reliability. And the one sacrifice you've had to make is kind of a plastic interior. They're getting nicer to it. This feels cool, you know? It feels like a nice place to be. I like the materials. While this, this is still plastic, obviously, and it's a synthetic leather, it's a nice place to be. It looks cool. It looks up to date. It looks modern. We actually have technology in this car that feels new and doesn't just look old and outdated. So overall, Grand Highlander, honestly, put this on your list if you're looking for a jumbo SUV. You know, my wife and I talk about if we were to get something that's a third row vehicle, she doesn't like the Sequoia. It's too big for her taste. I kind of agree it's a little bulky. Awesome vehicle. I loved the iForce Max and that. It was a beast to drive and I really did like it. However, it's a little big for my taste too. This is something that would be perfect. You can fit everybody in it and you don't feel too big and you can still tow with it and kind of use it as a utility vehicle. So it's a sweet spot and I like how the Highlander is still available. Of course, the Sequoia is still available. The new Land Cruiser just came out. So Toyota has an amazing selection now of SUVs and there's one for everybody, quite honestly, in every budget. So Toyota's on their game. This is certainly something to take a look at and the engine itself still does the job nicely. That is it then for the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Platinum. Big shout out and thank you once again to Classic Toyota of Wilkesboro. Big shout out to them for providing this car for today's video. Take a look at their website linked down below. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.